Technology is increasingly becoming an integral part of our lives and is transforming the spaces we work in. Hello and welcome to Expert Advice. Today I have with me our architecture and interior design expert Sapna Srivastav who will be talking on how technology is affecting office space design. Let us first welcome our very special guest of the day. Welcome to the show, Sapna. Hi, Pooja. It's great to be here again. Thank you so much. Even we are very glad to have you here. Now, moving on to our topic. My first question to you will be, what are the kind of technologies that have been brought about in offices today? See, we have been using technologies. We have been using computers and other uh, uh, varied uh, gadgets and equipments in our office design. But 21st century is being defined by two major uh, technologies that have come in. First is the internet access. Uh, we uh, now have uh, much wider coverage by internet access. They are, uh, uh, you know, the, the cost is coming down. It is much more widely available, easily available. There are higher bandwidth which are available, which has resulted in, uh, you know, very easy communication, which has resulted in, uh, uh, you know, uh, equipments like laptops, smartphones, tablets. So uh, workers are now connected from everywhere, anywhere to their offices. Second uh, aspect is that even your uh, wireless connections are increasing day by day. So when uh, there was a recent survey where it, it was seen that the wireless uh, connections are increasing much more than the fixed line connections which means people want to be mobile. And according to the recent survey by International Data Corporation, the number of mobile workers, which means who are working from everywhere and anywhere rather than a fixed space, uh, was in 2010 about 1 billion. And it's going to increase every year by 6%. So that is the kind of uh, technology uh, that we are looking at, how people are working. So it is changing the way people are working. Another major technology that has made inroads is cloud computing. So your uh, information uh, communication technology is getting much more uh, affordable, reasonably priced. Cloud computing has changed the way people are working in the sense that now a worker can access the data, their office data, from anywhere. Now the data is being stored on a cloud rather than the physical servers and offices, which has meant that now we do not need office spaces to have these data servers. Uh, they are much more uh, functionally efficient because they don't have to manage these data, which are all everything available online. So it it has increased the operational efficiency. It has increased the uh, you know the space efficiency. It has increased the efficiency of the workers because they can access the data from anywhere. All these aspects now have led to. Uh, so, uh, something called BYOD policy in offices. Globally now, uh, uh, offices, uh, you know, the workers can bring their own gadgets, which means bring your own device. Uh, that's the full form of BYOD. Because it was seen that people are much more comfortable when they're working with their own devices. Uh, so now the offices uh, are uh, allowing people to bring their own laptops. They are allowing people to bring their own tablets, their, their own smartphones, and they can work on them. There are certain policies, there are certain concerns in terms of uh, uh, you know, data protection, in terms of uh, security breaches. So for that, there are certain policies which are now coming up and uh, you know, security experts, software security experts uh, are working on that so that you know, there is no virus from a personal gadget that can can corrupt the company data. Uh, similarly, there are passwords which are required to enter a company's uh, network. Uh, there are certain applications or window, uh, you know, softwares which are allowed by by the company. So these uh, policies have been worked out. But this is another uh, feature that we are seeing that you know uh, workers can bring their own devices, which are mostly you know their laptops and mobile devices. Uh, you mentioned about cloud computing. Now, since you mentioned it could be accessed from anywhere in the world, so tell me how safe is it, you know, like regarding the safety and security policy of the company? See, safety in the sense, uh there are, uh, uh, it is not completely foolproof, uh, but it is something uh, the same way like any company would have a data server in their, you know, centralized data server and all the information and the data is stored in that. So instead of having your own data server, there are now data server vendors who will give you the space on their data so that you do not have to create a space for that. Okay. So you buy that space from these people and, you know, you can store all your uh, uh, data on their servers. 
Uh, the advantages, as I said, is that these servers can be accessed from anywhere, so you do not have to be physically in, a, in your office space to access it. As per the security breaches, uh, yes, there are a uh, lot of uh, you know, uh, security uh, networks which are available, a lot of software consultants are working on it, and there are certain things that have already been taken care of that who access it, how access it, who gets how much access. So probably a person at a certain hierarchy will not get access to all the files, you know, okay. so depending upon their hierarchy. Uh, the major concern uh, for um, uh, the office management is about protection from viruses so that how viruses do not enter these and they may, might corrupt their data so that is one which still people are working on and uh, it is under this thing but yes majorly uh, pro uh, the data protection is pretty much taken care of by the in-house in software departments time for a short break we'll be right back how technology is influencing office space design first and foremost uh, difference that we have seen in office design is that while earlier an architect or an interior designer was the owner of a project. Welcome back. We are in conversation with Sapna Srivastav, who is informing us about the technology's influence on office space design. Let's take this conversation ahead. So moving on to the design aspect, how technology is influencing office space design? See, now that uh, workers are mobile, you know, so a lot of technologies we are seeing, a lot of new equipments we are seeing coming in the office space. First and foremost, uh, difference that we have seen in office design is that while earlier an architect or an interior designer was the owner of a project, now we have many more consultants who are involved in an office design. So it could be your... Uh, uh, IT consultant, it could be your uh, software and hardware uh, security consultants. Uh, so they are all are now part of the design because uh, you need those uh, systems, you need those uh, wiring uh, systems, you need to have certain IT related infrastructure that needs to be incorporated at the stage of design. That's the one major change that we have seen. Uh, second is that now uh, because of technology, because of ease of communication, uh, office designs are becoming much more transparent, uh, which means uh, there are no, uh, like earlier what we used to have would be cubicle designs, you know, right. private offices. Now we are seeing much more open designs, people sharing the workspace. That is one major uh, change in the layout of the designs. Uh, collaborative spaces are seeing much more focus because uh, today collaboration is something which is the key word. So we are seeing collaborative spaces such as meeting rooms with multimedia and high advanced technology, communication systems, video conferencing. So these are the spaces which are getting much more attention and focus in the design. So this was about the overall office space design. Now talking about the furniture, how technology is affecting the furniture of office? Uh, I think before furniture we should talk about how the space design is being uh, being changed, you know, the, the planning or the interiors are being changed because uh, when the interiors get changed, you know, your furniture also gets affected. Uh, earlier what we had seen was space design used to be something uh, where uh, private offices would be on the uh, outside of, of the space, of the floor plate, so that they get all the views of the outside. And within uh, that inside space would be the workstations for people, for other workers. Now that concept is going. Now what we see is uh, the entire floor plate is reserved for workstations so that people who are working on the workstations, they can relate to the outside, they can get good views, which keeps them motivated, which gives them better working condition. And all the cubicles, they have come in the center of the floor plate, uh, which are more like, uh, as I said, that the office designing is becoming more transparent. So people, all people are working on the workstations if they want to make a private call, if they want to make a private discussion the internal cubicles which are in the center of the floor plate are being used for that. Mm -hmm. That is one aspect. Earlier what we had seen or till now what uh, was prevalent was that office spaces or the, pub, uh, the private uh, cabins were given as per the hierarchy of the organization. So if you are a simple worker, you get a workstation of this much by this much. Uh, if you are a manager, you get a cubicle. If you are a senior manager, you get a private office. If you are a VP, probably you get a corner office. 
now that thing is going. Uh, now, because real estate is becoming uh, more expensive mm. every day. So now the spaces are being allocated upon the time you spend in the office. Correct. So if you are an engineer who, who would be spending time in office for about 9 to 10 hours, you will be getting a bigger space rather than a sales manager who would be there only for a few hours in a day. So you get a workstation. Uh, probably a senior VP who would be traveling most of the time, so he does not require a corner office and waste the real estate. So the, the spaces are being designated as per the time that you are spending in the actual office. Accordingly, uh, what now happening is with you know most of your work with you, you carry your work with you, you have your mobile devices, everything. What people now need is a touchdown space. When you come in the office, you need a touchdown space. You know, it's like okay, now I've come to the office. I need some space to, you know, uh, settle myself. So these touchdown spaces could be a five by five uh, workstations where you have an internet connection and a phone connection, and you make your calls, you make your uh, mails, and you have kind of settled down. Now the spaces that we are saving. In private offices, while we are seeing that private spaces are getting reduced, activity-based areas are increasing in the offices. So, which means our activity-based areas are like cafeterias, are, are a break, you know, um, breakout zones. Uh, there are lounges being created for uh, probably workers to come together and discuss in a very informal way. Mm -hmm. So, these areas are getting much more focused in our office design to increase collaboration, to increase entrepreneurial zeal among the mm. workers. Okay. Storage, as I said, we don't need that much storage now mm -hmm. because everything is on data servers and everything is in your laptops and other uh, devices. You don't need to have physical files, you know, hard copies of anything. So our cabinetry is decreasing. You do not need that much storage space. You do not need uh, too much partitions. Another important thing is that, you know, you want to decrease the time of your uh, uh, interior construction Correct. because office is a commercial space you want to start working as soon as possible otherwise you're, you're losing money there's more to technology and office space design we'll let you know after a short break plug and play workstations are coming in where workstation is prefabricated you just bring it assemble it you plug in your computer and you're set to work Welcome back to Expert Advice. We have with us Sapna Srivastav, who's informing us about technology influencing office space design. Let's take this conversation further with her. Plug and play workstations are coming in, where workstation is prefabricated. You just bring it, assemble it, you plug in your computer, and you're set to work. Okay. So instead of uh, you know probably uh, constructing partitions and drywalls and workstations, which would take about two weeks, three weeks, one month, depending upon the scale of the project, you just bring in these uh, plug and play workstations, put them together, and within few days you are work ready to go. Okay, awesome. So these are some of the uh, space designs. Now probably we can talk about furniture. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, depending upon now that we have seen that cubicles are going, other, you know, earlier furniture was uh, dictated by the cubicle design. Correct. Cubicles are not there anymore. Mm. So, our workstations, first of all, they are changing in the way, you know, we work. So, today we have shared workstations, which are shared by four people or more. And these workstations are being made in sizes, funky sizes, funky shapes, you know, chic designs for you know, people to work in. They come with, fitted with all the wiring systems so that there are no loose wires hanging around. So they have the special trays for wires, etc. So that everything is, every connection is sorted out. It is already there available in your workstation. Glass is very, uh, you know, upcoming material in workstation because of the transparent nature. It, it looks very contemporary. It gives a very open mm -hmm. feeling to it. Workstations are becoming even adjustables. You know, now, uh, earlier we used to see there is a fixed workstation. Whether you are tall or short, you have to make do with it. Now we are getting workstations which are adjustable. So you can adjust the height as per your own uh, personal uh, physical uh, measurements. Uh, so that is one uh, workstation change that we have seen in the furniture. Chairs, which were, you know, uh, earlier, uh, they were designed only for one particular posture. 
because people used to work in one certain way. You are looking at the computer and you are working. That has changed now because people style of working has changed. Now you are no, you know you are using your laptop and your screen can be adjusted any way. And people are changing their postures. Uh, our earlier chairs were not designed to be working with tablets and uh, other devices. Uh, there are a lot of uh, international furniture companies who have done a lot of research on you know the chairs, especially for office offices. And uh, according to a certain um, study that was done across 11 countries, it was found that there are nine postures that mostly office goers use when they are working. And uh, they have come up with the chair designs, uh, which can be adjusted uh, adjusted as per these nine postures. Okay. So if you have to, you know, sometimes you have to look a little ahead. You'd want to change your posture, so you don't need to come on the edge of the seat. You can adjust your seat accordingly. You don't have to hunch to look at the screen. You can adjust your screen accordingly, uh, your chairs yeah. accordingly. Mm -hmm. So there are different uh, adjustments available with your uh, upper limb uh, interface or your back and stuff like that. Another uh, major change we have seen is uh, the furniture for conference rooms. Uh, earlier what we used to have would be a huge table, round table, rectangular table with the chairs around it. Now these tables particularly are coming with inbuilt technology systems because we know we are going to use multimedia, we know we are going to use laptops. So they are coming with the connections, with the sockets available within the table. The tables are now integrated with uh, you know, touch screens. They are being integrated with tables. Your chairs are coming integrated with keyboards. Uh, so which is making much more easier for people to just come, put in their devices, and start with the discussions. Exactly. What we used to earlier see was uh, whiteboards for discussions. Uh, which are being replaced by smart boards. So the smart boards can be just connected with your laptop. You can show your uh, whatever presentation that you have in your laptop on the smart board. If there are any edits to be done, changes to be done according to the discussion, they can be done right away. And um, you know, the printouts can be taken right away. They can be mailed to people right away. So these are the kind of uh, uh, designs that we are seeing. And accordingly, when you have a smart uh, boards, you have uh, your video conferencing, these are, uh, are your furniture is also being de designed accordingly. So your wall surfaces get designed accordingly. So there is no reflection of, uh, you know, which might help, uh, you might not be able to see the smart board. Okay. So these are some of the furniture changes, major changes that we have seen okay. in, in furniture. Okay, moving further, I would like to know, what is a smart office? Smart office per se would be uh, which has all these technologies built in. Yeah. Like we said, uh, uh, technology like internet access and uh, communication systems, video conferencing systems. You have uh, people uh, sitting in remote locations. One would be in this city, one would be in some other city. You are, so your salespeople might be in some other locations. A smart office will make sure that you have that kind of connectivity so that you can access, you can communicate with people all around. You, you have those devices to work more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, actual spaces are not so much important nowadays, your actual office space, but your connectivity. As I said, now people need just a touchdown space. They are not in the office uh, the entire day probably. Mm -hmm. So it is only certain functions which are there for, for the entire day, like your research and development department, probably your administration department, probably your accounting department. But your sales office is not there the entire day. Your uh, IT people might be traveling for, you know, from one side to another side. So you do not need a fully functional space for them. You have touchdown spaces, you come, you do not need to have designated spaces. Okay, this uh, particular uh, station is for this person, this particular station is for this person, this cubicle is for this person. You do not need to. That cubicle can be used by any person who's there at that time of the uh, day or week. These are the smart offices uh, which make 100% uh, usage of the real estate that they have bought in. Hmm. Uh, which makes smart use of the technology so that their workers can work efficiently. It is no more working nine to five. They can work at any time, uh, provided they get the connectivity to their data, which are provided in the office. They get connectivity with other people. So that is how smart offices are working in. We shall continue this topic in the next episode. Thank you so much, Sapna, for coming on our show. 
So this was Sapna Srivastav who informed us about technology's influence on office space design. For more information on design, architecture and real estate, keep watching SPIN TV. Goodbye, take care.